All right, in today's video, I'm going to show you guys how to edit like Iman Ghazi using Filmora, just like this. And yes, today we are going to use Filmora. This is based on requests from some of you guys. All right, guys, let's get started. So first of all, we're going to set our project settings. Just go to the top, click on file, then click on project settings. You're going to have this window. On aspect ratio, make sure you select 16 by 9 since we're going to post on YouTube. Then with the resolution, I shot mine in 4K, so I'm going to leave it like that. But you can select 1080p if you shot on that. Then frame rate, I shoot in 23.97. I'll keep it the same way. You can choose the one that you shot in. Then you can save it as default, so it's going to be your default settings anytime. Then click on OK. And this is the video we're going to use. I'm going to provide you guys. It will be down there below. You can get your hands on it and practice along. So just like that, I'm going to drag and drop in the timeline. When the video is in the timeline, we can go to this side on the player, click on the drop down menu and select either half or one fourth quality. So it's not going to slow down your machine. And also when you're editing, make sure you convert into proxy files. With that, you can just right click and select proxy files on this side. I already have mine in proxy. Also, you can just go to the top right, click on Filmora Wondershare, then click on preferences. Then when you go to performance, you can turn on proxy. Then also you can select when it's higher than 720. So anytime it's higher than 720p, it's going to convert into proxy files. With that, it's going to help you edit with a fast pace without slowing down your machine. Then you can click on apply. So the video is in the timeline. I was not saying anything at the beginning, so I'm just going to trim the beginning off. And I have my audio turned off on this side because I don't want to be distracting me. But you can turn it on if you want to be listening to, video, to what you're saying in the video. This is something Iman likes doing a lot and I do it a lot. It's a great effect. Just go to effects on the left side of the software. Then we're going to search for vignette. Then this is the one we're going to use. Also, you can click on the star icon over here and it's going to add to your favorite. When you go to favorite, you can find it right on that side. So then we can just drag and drop on the video. So right from there, when you look at the edges of the video, it makes it dark. With this, it's going to help you draw the focus of the viewers to whatever subject is in the video. Now let's change the settings of that. Just click on this icon and it's going to pop on this side. Then with the radius, we want it to be a bit bigger. So let's increase that to 100. Then with the opacity, let's dial it down. We don't want it to be that strong on the edges. So when you look at it, it has this effect. Let me turn it off and on so you can see what it's doing to the video. This is one trick I like doing a lot when it comes to video editing. So with this, we're just going to go to stock media. Then we can click on library. Just click on this drop down menu. It's going to pop on this side. Click on solid color and we're going to use black for this. Also, once again, you can click on the star to add to your favorite. So next time when you need it, it's going to be easy to find it. I'm going to drag and drop in the timeline. For now, let me just stretch and make it long. But it's all going to depend on what edit you are going for. So now you can see it's covering the video below and we're going to work on that soon. With that selected, go to the right side of the software and click on mask. We're going to use linear mask. Click on that. And by the way, if you want to see a video on masking when it comes to Fulmora, drop a comment down below and I'll be happy to make that video. So with that selected, we're just going to rotate it to 90 degrees. Then we're going to move it to the lower third of the screen. So when you divide the screen into three, this is going to be the third part. From here, you can use this control on the screen to just soften the edges, or you can just go to the blur strength and increase it on that side. So when you look, we want to darken this bottom part of the screen whenever we want to show something on that part. So now we need to animate that to come in and we're going to use keyframes. Take your playhead to the starting of it. Make sure you've selected the black solid color. Then go to the right side, click on basic. Scroll down on opacity, make a keyframe there. 
let's turn it down to zero and by the way if you want to see a video on keyframes when it comes to fumara drop a comment down below and i'll be happy to make that video then we're gonna go somewhere in the timeline something like this it all depends on how your video or your edit goes then we're gonna drop another keyframe on there by just dragging the opacity to 100 and because we have first keyframe on that same black solid color it's going to automatically drop a keyframe on this side so now when you play and look at it it's going to come in slowly that was too slow so let's move it a bit closer and now we want that to come in smoothly so we're going to work on the curves go to the right side click on keyframe panel it's going to give you the keyframe graphs on this side then just right click on this keyframe dot or point and click on continuous curve we're going to do the same thing with the first keyframe right click and select continuous curve and now we're going to play and see how smooth it comes in so now we're going to introduce our images on the lower third of the screen go to media and once again, I'm going to provide you guys with these images too. I took a screenshot of just my YouTube channel. You can take a screenshot of any image you want to use. So just like that, I'm going to drag and drop in the timeline. Let me make it long a bit. So with that selected, we want to cut out individually. So it's going to be three files in the timeline. With that, let's take this keyframe panel off. Then click on mask and select rectangle. We're going to work on this image on this side. So let's just drag it to that side, increase it a bit and keep working on it. So I just want to select this. Then when you scroll down on radius, let's increase it a bit. What this doing is when you look on the edges, it's going to really give this curve on the edges. That makes it look cool. So we're just going to increase it a bit on that when you look carefully at the edges. So we have one done, we need to create second one for the remaining two images. So we're going to make a duplicate of this. Press option and drag upwards. With the second image selected at the top, make sure you are on mask and let's just drag and move it to the second image. Now let's just shape it using the controls on this side. Just like that, we're going to make another duplicate. Press option or alt and drag upwards. Select the third one, let's move the mask to the third image. Let's use these controls to select it nicely. So now we have three individual images on the screen. Select all and let's just move it down to the lower third where we want it to come. And this looks a bit bigger, so I'm just going to reduce the size of it. Make sure you've selected all of them and let's just drop it down to this side so with that we're going to start with the first image click on anywhere in the timeline and click on the first image with that selected we're going to create animation to come in from the bottom of the screen you can go to the already pre-built animation that comes with filmora then click on slide up to check how it looks like double click on that it looks a bit faster when you look down here it's created a keyframes for us so we're going to use that based on the keyframes to do our animation now i'm just going to stretch this is the second keyframe and this is the first keyframe so i'm just going to stretch it a bit to this side and play and see how it looks like now i can work with the curves for the curves to show make sure you click on basic so now when we click on the keyframe panel we can see all the graphs on this side and just like we did it previously we're going to make the curves smooth so with that, we only did changes to the Y axis. So when you look at it, there is the Y axis. So just like that, right click on this keyframe points, change to continuous, right click on this, change to continuous. So now we're just going to copy this keyframe animations on this image onto this tool. And this is what we're going to do. Click on the first keyframe points, press command or control if you're using a PC. Then click on the second one, right click and select copy keyframe. Then select this image, right click on that, select paste keyframe, select this, right click and select paste keyframe. Now when you look at it, all of them are going to come in at the same time and we don't want that. We want to create some unique style to it. So we're going to go somewhere five frames or eight frames forward. 
And by the way, when you press arrow forward on your keyboard, it's gonna move one frame ahead. And we're gonna move this second image to that very side. And we're gonna do the same thing, five to eight frames ahead and move this third one to that very side. Now, when we look at it, it's gonna come in nicely. So now let's add some a bit effects to it that when the image comes in, it's gonna shake a bit. And for this effect to work smoothly and clean, we need to make a compound clip of all the images individually. And before that, let's just stretch this before we create the compound clip. Now click on the first image, option G. It's gonna bring this window out or you can just right click and select compound clip. Then let's change the name image one to make everything easy for us later on. Click OK. Let's do the same thing for the remaining two and I'll be fast on this side. Now we have three compound clips with a name nicely on it. Click on the first image, then go to effect. And I already have it on my favorites. You can search on this side, search, just search for mouth and it's gonna pop out for you. Then with that, I'm just gonna drag and drop on the first image. Then let's work on it to make it nicely. With that, just click on this icon and it's gonna pop on this side. Let's close this keyframe panel. Or also when you click on the video itself and you click on effect, it's gonna bring all the effects on that very video. With the frequency, I can turn it down a bit to somewhere 40. X axis, I don't want anything to happen to it, so I'm gonna move it. Y axis, I can turn it down. And then position Z, I can go down a bit to something like this. I don't want it to be that much on the screen. Now, when you look at it, when it comes in, it has this cool movement to the image. Now, we're gonna do the same thing for these two. With that, just click on the first image, press Option Command C to copy that effect, or if you're using a PC, Alt Control and C to copy that effect. Then let's select these two, Option Command V to paste that effect, and once again, if you're using a PC, Alt Control and V to paste that effect. When you look down here, it's, we got the effect on it nicely. Now to make it really nice, let's change the movement of it, the settings of it. Let's start with image tray. Click on it with the frequency. Let's go to somewhere 45. Then let's click on this second image. Frequency, let's go down to somewhere 20. Now we need to animate them to go out of the screen. And this is what we're gonna do. Let me move this a bit up so we can have some room. With that, select all these three images. Option G to bring this window out. Let's name it all images. Click OK. Then let's just trim it to this black solid color. So we're gonna take our playhead to somewhere here, click on that compound clip. And with that, we're gonna use keyframes on position. So I'm gonna go to position, make a keyframe there. Take my playhead to somewhere here. And then on Y axis, I'm just gonna drag it to the negative side. So it's gonna go out of the screen. So when you look at it, it's gonna go out. It looks a bit too slow, so I'm just gonna move it closer to this keyframe. Now let's make that animation smooth. Click on keyframe panel, let's stretch it. Right click, continuous curve, right click on this, continuous curve. And we're gonna do the same thing with the black lower third on this side, the contrast on this side. Let's select that and take our playhead to somewhere here. So that is gonna start going out when this starts going out too, to make it look nice. Select that black solid, go to your right side of the software. Remember it was on opacity, so we're gonna create keyframe on opacity. Then let's take it to somewhere after this second keyframe on these images. Then on opacity, we're just gonna drag it to zero. And just like that, let's make that smooth. Right click on that, continuous. Right click on that, continuous. We're gonna add some motion blur. Double click on this compound clip, then double click on image one. You can go to effects and search for motion blur and it's gonna bring this out. I'm just gonna drag this and drop it in the timeline. 
Now with that one selected, I'm gonna use the keyframe just like this to match it. So click on that and let's drop a keyframe on blur. Then let's take our playhead to this second keyframe and we're gonna drop another keyframe on blur. This time around, let's just dial it down to zero. Then when we take to the beginning, we can take it to somewhere 40 or 35. Now when I play and show you guys, when it's coming in, you can see it has this blur and then it comes in nicely. When we are done, click on the motion blur, command C to copy, then click on this drop down menu. Let's go to image two and let's drop this on that. Then let's go back to this drop down menu, click on image three and let's drop on that. Command V to drop on that side. Now you can click on this and it's going to take you to the main timeline. So now when we play and look at it, what we have so far, it comes in nicely. It shakes a bit on the screen and then all of them goes out at the same time. This is pretty simple, but very effective. So with this side, I was making a point on this side. Let me turn the volume up. It was meant for you, Jake. It was meant for YouTube. So right when I was said it was meant, I'm going to make a cut and change the size or the scale of the video. And that really helps maintain the focus of your viewers. So just over there, I'm just going to make a cut. When you look at the waves, you can see there was a bit few seconds. I don't want that. So I'm just going to take it to this side. B to make a cut. Go to this side and make a cut. Let me delete that part off. Then with this second incoming clip, I'm going to increase the size of it. Let's take keyframe panel off and click on video. Then scroll up. We're going to change the scale size of it. Make sure this is locked. Don't change that. We're going to increase all of them at the same time. So now when I play and show you guys, this it works like magic. It was meant for you. You can see when you reach there. Magic. It was meant for magic. It was meant for YouTube. And that really helps a lot when it comes to video editing. So with this transition, I do it a lot too when it comes to video editing. So this is the second video we want to, or image we want to transition to. Just drag and drop in the timeline. Then between these two clips, we're going to bring this overlay that I got on YouTube. I'm going to drop it down there below. You can download and practice your hands on it. Just drag and drop in the timeline. And then we're going to select just the part that we want it to show. I want from this side to show. So I'm just going to select that part. Trim my video to that side and select 10 frames or 8 frames of it. Make a cut on that side and delete the remaining ones. Now I'm going to drag it in between these two clips and I want it to be in the middle of that. Place it right in the middle. So with that one selected, go to the right side. On blend mode, click on this drop down menu. Let's change it to screen. And now when we play and look at it, you can see it transition nicely to this very second image. Now you can click on this video to watch another tutorial on how to use Fumora to edit your YouTube videos. All right, guys, catch you on the next one. Peace.